So we basically start and look at the chart. This is how I have them set up. Okay, so this is the indices. So we can go over any kind of commodities or currency pairs a little bit later on. But right now, I like to look at the indices because this is what really drives the market. So if we look on the left hand side, we've got the S&P. Okay, so the S&P, big, big level of support here at one tick take five and a half. Broke through that, had all these nice dotted lines of levels to possibly test on the downside. Just shot, uh, stopped short of the um, of the uh, the Bollinger Band lower end here. Remember on the dailies, and the market is rejected. So just by having your chart set up like this, you, you can start to see a real, real benefit of being able to trade other markets. Now I have the S and P here because S and P will set the driving tone for the rest of these markets. Okay, with probably the exception of the Nikkei in the bottom corner. But we've got the Dow. Uh, we've got the SMI, Eurostox, uh, DAX here, and the FTSE. So, for instance, if you see on the daily the big red candle on the FTSE, okay, yeah, that, that means that you've still got some buying opportunities perhaps in the FTSE above any key daily levels of support and resistance because this S&P has gone from a red candle, okay, to when the market's just coming up to, you know, just coming back into strength after the open, has pushed all the shorts out of the market and we're coming back this key level of support, that's how they're going to act active resistance to come back down or break through and hit these upper ends of resistance up here. So anything red, yeah, in the other markets could signify a buying opportunity. So the euro stocks, still red, okay? So when we're above this key level at 822, that could be a nice little bounce if the S&P goes green on the dailies to start buying. Okay, so this is an overview. This is your daily chart. So when I first open my screens on a day, uh, on a morning's trade. I want to see what's happening. Okay, and the best way of doing this is looking at daily charts. Okay, we can go higher to different time frames, so weekly and monthly, but I recommend is getting a good overview. So you definitely want to start on the daily. Okay, so you see daily direction, you see bias. I mean, look how this SMI behaves, the Swiss index. You might not look at it much, but look, find good support down here at 775, yeah, the lower end of the Bollinger Band. Then we gap up to the moving average. And again, that's one of these rare signals you don't see very often. Just like the DAX is currently has on the uh, on the daily chart, we see this island cluster formation. Okay, so the market was dipping down. Some new fundamental news or new thinking has come into the European spectrum. The market has broke above the moving average, started with a green candle, even come back to test the moving average. But look, this gap still remains. Okay, so the gap remains from here to here. Yeah, a good 67 ticks. OK, and while we have that, the momentum of the SMI is still bullish until that gap is closed, a daily cluster formation. OK, so when I'm doing my analysis, and I'm doing my my kind of theory of what I think is going to happen today. I go back to the basics. OK, the market's come up, come all the way down, found key support down here at 724. It was in a nice upward move, started to correct back down, and then something's happened in the market to make it blip up. So we've got this island cluster formation, which is a continuation pattern. So you'd expect the SMI to make some highs and you'd expect it to get to, you know, probably 8180. That, that looks where it's going to be. It's going to close this gap and get towards these highs up here. So that, that's only the, you can only see these gaps and you can only really put them into context on the right time frame. So if you're looking at that chart on an hourly, sorry, one second, you're looking at that on an hourly, you've missed all that, all that gap, really. You don't really see it. It's not quite as prominent. It's not quite as clear. You get the same market direction. They were making higher lows and the market's moving up. But you see it much more clearly on the daily chart. So that's just one instant, easy snap bit of um, te technical judgment you can make just by looking at the right time frames to start off with. So the daily, we're seeing that dips are being bought, as we've seen in the DAX here, for instance. I mean, look at these dailies already, these big long wicks yeah, and green bodies. The market's trying to push down to lower levels but can't hold on. So the bulls have come back into the market and pushed it above. So even if you did the most basic of trading, you know, buying above the uh, the moving average on the daily, yeah, you're still doing very nicely. You're still making profitable trades. But having a view like this and to have your leading market, the S&P, the key uh, indices for me, and all your other charts, you start to get a good idea of what the market's going to do. OK, so uh, what effect will have on the Forex markets? Well, we can, we can go to the Forex screen in just a minute. OK, because we can set our Forex up in exactly the same manner. But right now, this is just a good indication of my basic principles. If you want to turn your screens in in the morning, 
and understand what's happening, your dailies are the only way to go. Okay? And as you zoom in to the smaller time frames, your hourlies, maybe as low as your 15 minutes, you're zooming in and getting more information. But if you've got to have a step back and understand what's happened in the last week or so, then you need to have your daily charts open. And it becomes a lot clearer. So they might look messy to you, okay, some of these charts, quite a lot of line, but all these dotted lines are higher level points of interest. So just monthly, weekly, or daily levels of attraction. So the market found key support or resistance. I have some good key Fibonacci's. Okay, I love Fibonacci. You can't deny for a directional market or a tracing market, it, you know, it really does work. I mean, look at the S&P. Again, we find support on the 50%, support on the 38.2, support on the 23.6. I mean, you just can't discount Fibonacci on the higher time frames. So anyway, you've got your overview and you understand what's happening. Okay, so right now, the S&P has rejected all the losses, so we dip buying in the rest of the European market. So anywhere we see these dotted lines, key support, we start to buy. So if you had have bought the DAX down at 8245, for instance, which is a nice, we have a mini Fibonacci and an overall Fibonacci. If you bought the DAX here, at this key level down here, you've made yourself 108 ticks. So what's the market going to do for now on the daily? If it's going to break up, well, it's going to break up even further and go green and positive. It can move another 41 ticks and get to this uh, Fibonacci level. It's a key uh, Fibonacci of this up move to me. Or it can get maybe as high, you never know, as 8476, which is almost the actual tops and these highs back in May. But right now, again, I think, unfortunately to say, you've missed the majority of, of the of the up move. Okay, if you're going to buy off yesterday's Fibonacci, you could have bought for 23, 38 or 50 and made some money. So is there enough money now to be able to buy into the DAX? I don't know. Very difficult to say. But the whole point is, if you just minimize that, you know, you can set up this higher time frame trading on any product. OK, you can set up your charts to look like this on any single commodity, any group of commodities, any indices or FX pairs. So you don't have to just stick to trading one market. So you think all the opportunities have gone out the DAX. It doesn't matter. OK, it doesn't matter at all. We can go and trade any product we want. So this is really just to explain the higher time frame view of the dailies, checking correlated products against each other and having an overview.